I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching the Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to take a look at Extreme Carnage Toxin, which came out about two weeks ago. I'm way behind on my books. Luckily, I was able, you know, I got paid today, so I was able to go pick some up. So that's why I'm finally getting to these. And plus, we got some movie news recently, and I know that kind of trumps all this other stuff. You know, I kind of put uh, movie news first if I can, and and we do the comics as like, you know, stuff in between the movie news. And so it's nice. We got a little break here. We got the movie coming out in two weeks here in the U.S., and uh, so we got a little bit of a reprieve right now. So I figured now is the time to get some of these comic book episodes in. So that's what we're going to do. So the next like two or three episodes are going to focus on comic books. So I hope you guys enjoy those. Uh, and I do have a digital code for this because obviously we're going to get into spoilers. So boom, there you go. First person to put that code in is going to get a free digital copy of Toxin here. And again, shout out to Coliseum of Comics for getting me the connecting cover for this one and the agony issue. So that way I could have all of them connect together. And then after I review these two issues, we still have the third and final part, which is actually going to come out coincidentally, because uh, it wasn't originally going to do this, but since the movie got pushed up, the week of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, or Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, the week that hits theaters, that's when we're going to get the final part of Extreme Carnage. But no matter what my opinions are, as always, I encourage you all to go support Symbiote Comics. Uh, you know, pick up anything out there that has symbiotes in it, um, because, you know, we all have different tastes, so I'd rather you know for yourself what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and if you have any thoughts on what you like or don't like, let me know down below, and as always, we'll continue our conversation down in the comment section. So let's dive into this. Um, this issue came out, uh, like I said, about two weeks ago, and it picks up right where the last issue left off. You know, each symbiote, the Life Foundation one, and Toxin, and, you know, some of the other characters, they're each getting their own one-shots, although Agent Anti-Venom's not getting his own one-shot, uh, but he's kind of at the crux of this uh, story, the center, along with Andy Benton, who was Scream and is now Silence. She has, like, a new anti-Scream symbiote, like a white symbiote made by Alchemex, and uh, that's just, that's pretty cool because that's kind of where Flash's anti-venom suit comes from. And uh, we're going to get into that soon because we're going to be going through the Mike Costa run very soon as well. So this was written by Steve Orlando. That's the thing is all these issues, uh, they've had like four writers, I think, on these like nine issues. So, you know, some writers get like, uh, you know, the main writer, I think, gets the first and last issue. And then we had the writer of Scream come in and he did two issues. Alyssa Wong uh, did two issues. And I think Steve Orlando has done two issues. So they're all kind of divvied up like the writing duties and stuff. All under the, I guess, editor guise of Devin Lewis, um, who is the editor on this. But there's also an executive editor, Nick Lowe. And then assistant editors, Danny Kazem and Tom Groneman, who I'm only bringing up their names because I feel like I'm going to have some criticisms for the editing in these stories for the next two issues. So there you go. There's their names. And uh, we're probably going to talk about their work ability um, as we go through this. So again, everything here is just my opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. Just let me know down below and we'll chat down there some more. So this picks up, like I said, as soon after the last one left off, we got, uh, you know, Bren, the kid who's the new toxin, and his dad, who is a, a, a guardsman at Alchemex. Um, they don't know who each other are. They don't know, like, Bren doesn't, you know, know his dad's a guardsman. His dad, who hunts symbiotes, doesn't know that his son is the new host for Toxin. So there's some of that going on, and I do like that relationship. That was already set up prior, but they kind of flesh that out a little bit more here, and I kind of dig it. Um, but when Alchemist gets attacked in the last issue, uh, Bren starts getting afraid for his dad. So he gets on his bike and he's going to Alchemex to try to, you know, see if he can help, you know, as, as Toxin. Um, but he's trying to, you know, be incognito a little bit. So he's going as himself. And when uh, all of a sudden Toxin doesn't start answering him. So Bren is like, all right, Toxin, maybe the bike isn't helping. Let's just swing there. Let's swing to Alchemex, you know, come out and let's, you know, use our, use your powers to get us there faster. And Toxin doesn't answer. And he's like, okay, that's weird. So he's like, all right, I'll keep pedaling on the bike then and try to get to Alchemex. And meanwhile, while, you know, Bren is on his bike heading to Dalcomex, you have Toxin inside the hive where Carnage was, and uh, they're, they're kind of duking it out and battling each other. And they get into a pretty vicious fight, actually. Actually, most of this issue, uh, the first part of this issue, is them fighting. And uh, you get some cool moments where, like, Toxin rips off the jaw of Carnage, and Carnage giving him some banter, saying, like, hey, you're my son, you're the 1,000th, you know, uh, symbiote in our bloodline, um... And, uh, and he goes, so you're, you're supposed to be special and yet you've been nothing but a failure and a disappointment and you've died as many times as I have. And, uh, and you know, and Toxin's like, yeah, and you were, you're the one who tried to kill me a couple times. And he goes, but I'm still alive. You're still alive. So 
let's end this finally. So Toxin's ready to throw down. He's fighting tooth and claw with uh, with Carnage. Um, and they're both like constantly going back and forth and one-upping each other. But in the end, I think Carnage basically slivers away after it seems like Toxin beat him in the hive. And Toxin goes around claiming that he's the new person in charge of the hive. But that's not exactly true. I think Carnage is just like, eh, when, he, when, he, when I need the hive, I use it. When I don't, you know, do whatever you want in here. Um, I'll come back and kick you out when I'm ready. And that's kind of what's going on. So, of course, everyone is still in the mindset that Senator Crane is Carnage because every time he speaks on the on the news and on TV, there's drum beats. That's what Toxin says. I hear drum beats. I hear something calling me to action. Um, and that's what the other symbiotes heard. And that's what brought them all, you know, to Washington, D.C. to be there with Senator Crane. Um, but again, we haven't really seen Senator Crane actually manipulating all this we just see him leading the friends of humanity and being the face of the friends of humanity now the new face of them uh, which is an old x-men villain group or or group that was against mutants i guess um and so that's what friends of humanity are now they're like eh, we're not here to be you know a prejudice against mutants or anything like that we just don't want aliens any more aliens coming to our planet and attacking us we're getting sick of this and uh, and so obviously being a senator there's probably a lot of people that will believe him or agree with him on that uh, especially in the marvel universe which gets attacked every freaking weekend it feels like um so i'm sure a lot of people are like yeah we're sick of this but i don't know what a little senator is going to do uh, but still that's what his platform is and he's running the friends of humanity now and so that's what's going on in the background. So there's a lot of political stuff in this. Um, but um, even though there is some nods between like some of the other writers um, who are probably, you know, left leaning and stuff, there's a little bit of that in here. But then I feel like there's a little bit of a balance at times too. But then as soon as it feels like it's going to get too bogged down in the politics, they do break away from it. And I'm kind of relieved. Mainly this is a story about a kid who's trying to go save his dad. And when he gets there, he sees that his dad did get messed up pretty badly. Um, and he sees him on a wheelchair, or like on a stretcher, I'm sorry. And he's like, Dad, oh my God. And he goes, hey, are you a guardsman? Uh, you know, because like, oh, you say you work security here, but their security force is the guardsman. And his dad's like playing it off like, no. He's like, come on, I'm not going to wear a dumb green suit. I can handle myself without it. And, the, you know, the kid, Brent, is like, well, I, I could tell if he's lying if Toxin was here. Uh, but Toxin's not here. He's still dormant in my mind somewhere, you know, trying to find a way out, I guess. And that's what Toxin does. He's like... He's about to leave after he defeats Carnage, but he sees a twinkle in the distance in the void, someone trying to come into the void. So he's like, he goes off to investigate that. So he's still in the void and he's still not talking to Bren. So, um, so while that's happening, this is where the editing part comes in. Uh, and maybe someone can help me understand this because I read this issue twice and the next issue twice and I feel like I still don't understand this. So maybe one of you can help me. Um, this apparently is supposed to be Hank. Doesn't look like Hank at least from a, uh, a color, you know, skin tone job, because um, Hank is African-American. Uh, this guy, I guess, could be, but the coloring's a little, he look, he's just lighter skinned in this one than he is in the other ones. Uh, same facial hair, I guess, unless he's in disguise. Like, I, I mean, I don't know, like, it's, uh, but I don't, I, paling his face for a disguise is not very PC or good to do. <laughs> so I, I don't know what's going on here with the art. Um, I feel like that's an editing thing that someone should have picked up on or noticed. Um, but anyway, this is Hank uh, from the first issue who I was hoping they would do something with in this story. And he's kind of been in the background. He now works for Crane and he's keeping an eye on him for Flash, but he doesn't really know what he's involved in. Um, so here he's saying, I think I've been made, which at the end of the last issue, it seemed clear that the other People, the other Life Foundation symbiotes that are secretly working for Crane and around him, they were leering at Hank. So it seems like they're on to him. So Hank's saying, I think they're on to me. I think they're going to come get me. Um, but if you pick up Agony, you're going to see that uh, he says, I don't think anyone knows about me or they're on to me yet. So if, they, if they're not on to you yet in this book and they are on to you in this book and this one came out first and this one comes out after... Like, what made you change your mind? Uh, or maybe an editor just didn't talk to you and help you uh, work out that little minor uh, inconsistency. I mean, it's a minor thing, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, okay, first the art and now the dialogue. So again, maybe someone out there, maybe there's something, a dot I'm not connecting, which, hey, brain damage, you know, so possibly. But I, I feel like there's a massive mistake in this series. Um, and that's one of them, I think, is uh, just the, the look of Hank here. And then also him saying, I think I've been made. And there's Agony watching him from behind, uh, showing that it looks like he's been made. Um, but then in the Agony book, 
when he meets up with Flash, he says, I don't think they're on to me yet. I don't get it. So uh, the Void, as, uh, as Toxin is still in there, he actually finds Silence. That little twinkle of light at the end of the tunnel in the darkness was Silence and Agent Anti-Venom. And so he teams up with them and he says, look, I want to kill Carnage. He's messing. Uh, he took, you know, out my my host, Bren's dad, uh, who's going to be OK, but still he's, you know, in, he's in bad condition. So I'm ready to like suit up and go take down Carnage. This is where he's going to be. It looks like he's going to be in Washington, D.C., possibly at the next speech that the president gives where the senator is also going to be. So Senator Crane will also be speaking for the Friends of Humanity at this you know big event. And it looks like the president of the United States is going to be there. So it seems like the president might be the target for Carnage, who is a, apparently, you know, tethered to Senator Crane. Or at least that's what everyone thinks. So at the end of the book, they all fly off with their dragon wings uh, to go into battle. They leave the void and then go back to the real world and head to Washington, D.C. So I don't know. This issue was just kind of okay. I mean, I like the story with Bren and his dad. Like, I actually really like that dynamic where it's like, it's pretty, you know, basic. It's not like very creative in a lot of ways, but it's simple enough to where I just like it. Like, it's one of those simple ideas that I just can like, hey, I like this. I can wrap my head around it. I think it adds good drama and, and stuff between the father and the son. Uh, so I like Bren and him being Toxin and his dad being a guardsman and them basically essentially being enemies, but not knowing each other or the other person. I like stuff like that in comic books. Uh, it's very, you know, soap opera E and stuff, and I kind of dig it. Um, but, uh, and it's something you can only run for like maybe six issues to a year. Um, so I hope it doesn't drag on too long because eventually they're going to find out who each other are. It's just obvious. Um, but, uh, but you know, I, I don't mind that story and I hope to see that expanded some way in the future or more of that story in the future. Um, so who knows? With If Venom 2 is a big success, they'll probably green light a bunch of books and maybe we'll get another Toxin series at some point in the future. Who knows? Um, but for now, this one, I mean, I just thought it was okay. I liked all the stuff with Bren and him racing to get to his dad. But all the other stuff that they're building up with the, the senator and all that, I'm like, I ah, get to it already. Uh, it just felt like a lot of uh, filler. But there was like, you know, Carnage was trying to recruit Toxin and then saying, if you choose to go against us, I'm going to, you know, uh, take over you anyway. So either you could, you know, fight me like, you know, one of the other symbiotes did and I still control them. Um, or you can just willingly come with me and Toxin fights back and kicks Carnage out of the void. So seems like one, you know, one point for Toxin so far. Um, but we still got another part to this, and then we're going to have the finale in a couple weeks. So in the next episode, I will go into, well, I'll, actually, I'll wait. The next episode, I'm going to talk about Venom Homecoming. We're going to dive into the Mike Costa run, finally, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Lee Price story. I know you guys are so excited for that. Um, so be back for that. And then two episodes from now, I'll get you the agony review up, or at least my thoughts on it. Not really a review, but just kind of my thoughts. Um, and we'll talk more about that inconsistency and in dialogue and stuff with Hank. So yeah, make sure you come back for that. So if you have any thoughts on this, let me know down below. And if you can correct me, if I'm wrong about the Hank stuff, let me know down below. I'm definitely open to, uh, to hear what I overlooked or what I missed, uh, for sure. So thank you so much. See you all in the future. Peace.